Hey guys, how's it going today? This is Jim from The Pain PT and today we're going to talk about the link between anxiety and depression and chronic pain and I want to go over today with you guys um, a study here that I'm going to link into the notes here. It's called The Association of Depression and Anxiety with Pain and I really want to come back to this and drive this home because the science really supports the interplay of emotions with chronic symptoms and this is the biggest thing that's missed in modern medicine I always talk about this now if we look at depression and anxiety both those words indicate emotions depression is associated with sadness and anger and anxiety associated with fear so we're covering all the three primary emotions fear anger and sadness and so what this study did is looked at almost 3,000 people which is a pretty large sample and what they found was that, um, and what they said was that about 70% of people with uh, depression and anxiety have chronic pain. So that's a very large amount of people. And we want to make this link. I've talked before about how the emotional centers of the brain are predictive and also an amplifier of chronic pain. So we know that this Emotional parts of your brain can actually predict and cause symptoms to become chronic or they can cause chronic symptoms. You can also amplify those symptoms on the back end. So we can have depression and anxiety as a bi-directional um, pathway going both ways. So we can get a front end, that anxiety and depression on the front end can cause physical somatic symptoms and that's what's really important here. But also on the back end that um, you can have both, a double whammy I call it, where Maybe you had stress, you had some anxiety, you had some anger, some sadness that wasn't processed that caused your physical symptoms to emerge. Or maybe you had an acute injury, but your brain has a uh, high sensitivity to it, so it, you became anxious and worried and sort of catastrophizing around that pain. That's a back end, okay? That's the back end anxiety and depression that can result from long-standing pain. So when people have that on the back end, that's an amplifier uh, of the current symptoms that makes it worse. The front end is that you may have depression and anxiety. That is the cause of your pain, but you're not knowing that because the only signs of your depression and anxiety are coming out in physical, somatic ways. That's the big take-home point here. So what these guys did, like, again, they studied just close to 3,000 people. The conclusion was that the study shows that depressive and anxiety disorders have similar and very strong associations with chronic pain, which includes pain-related disability and pain intensity, musculoskeletal pain, cardiorespiratory pain, and gastrointestinal pain compared to a con control group without depression or anxiety disorder. Okay, important statement here. Depression and anxiety share the same pathophysiological pathways as pain and can have a reciprocal effect in each other which could explain these associations. So again, the p these pathways um, are the same. Depression and anxiety pathways uh, share the same pathways as physical pain, somatic symptoms. This is why we can have somatic symptoms in the body coming from depression and anxiety, coming from fear, coming from sadness, coming from anger. Okay, and it's bi-directional, so it can be on both sides, like I mentioned to you guys. Okay, so they go on to say that, um, that this might mean that patients with depression or anxiety and pain are a different group and need different treatment. Okay, and patients that do not have pain accompanying depression and anxiety. So what this is alluding to is what, what I've been working with here with you guys, the pain PT and other people in this um, world, is treating the emotional piece as the primary piece in your recovery, not the physical piece. Okay, many people have tried the physical treatments and all sorts of stuff haven't gotten better. So looking at the emotional piece and targeting your emotional brain, your limbic brain, can have better results in my opinion. It's an area that, that most modern medicine has missed. They're not looking at this. Okay. So there's a strong association uh, again between depression and anxiety and 
these different types of pains, which go again across musculoskeletal pain, which is the most common, cardiac respiratory pain, gastrointestinal type pain. So it covers a broad, uh, a broad area of the body at different types of symptoms. So I want you guys to really take this home today that, um, that the science is also supporting what I've been saying for a long time. I'm not just making this up, obviously, that your emotions and the emotional brain is, is part and parcel with chronic conditions and about it, chronic somatic conditions. The other thing that they came out of the study that I will mention, which is an interesting take, is that they find that when anxiety and depression go into remission, that people still have somatic symptoms. Now, we can explain that from our end that that's because the anxiety or depression is being shunted into a pure physical pathway. Okay, so maybe you don't feel anxious, maybe you don't feel depressed, but you got a lot of somatic symptoms in the body. So that could explain that why they found that as anxiety and depression remitted, pain and somatic symptoms did not. Okay, so this can explain why. They didn't go on to say that, but that's what I believe would be true based on work of Dr. Sarno and TMS work. All right, guys, reach out with questions. This is um, an interesting study. I'm going to start posting more studies again because I feel like it really supports uh, the work I'm doing here, it makes it legitimate, makes it real, and gives you guys evidence that you can draw off for your own recoveries going forward. Okay, take care, guys. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.